Increasingly, New Zealanders and overseas visitors have turned to the unspoiled mountains, forests and coasts of the South Island in search of the beauty and peacefulness that is part of this magnificent country. The Rootburn walking track is located at the end of the Southern Alps and the first recorded tourist walks in this area date back to the 1880s. But it wasn't until 1939 that the track was completed. Well-known New Zealander and conqueror of Mount Everest, Sir Edmund Hillary, said this about the Rootburn track. The Rootburn is one of the most superb walking areas in the world. Dense rainforest with excellent tracks, sparkling lakes, mighty peaks and remote passes supply a sense of challenge without too great a feeling of danger. A guided walk is exactly as the name says it is. A completely guided walk ranging from three to six days where you have absolutely nothing to worry about except enjoying yourself as everything from a hot shower to all your meals are catered for. The Rootburn Guided Walk is three days and two nights in the spectacular World Heritage Fiordland and Mount Aspiring National Parks. Day one begins as you meet your guide with an informative three and a half hour coach ride through Tianao to the Divide on the scenic Milford Road. The evening before, you'll have been to a pre-track briefing explaining all the things you need to know. I'm Leo O'Hagan and I'll be guiding you across the Rootburn track for the next three days. So what we do first of all is we take a short walk up this hill here and uh, we're going to get to the Key Summit turn off. Once you put on your light pack, it's time to begin your walk on the well-graded track. On the first day, there's an opportunity to leave your pack on the main track as you take a small detour above the bush line to Key Summit. Make sure you take your camera, as the lofty peaks of Fiordland are a spectacular sight. Right team, here we are at Key Summit, which has been described as the annual general meeting of the mountains, because you can see that all around us we've got these great peaks. From here, you'll slowly descend to Lake Howden for a picnic lunch and relaxed chat with your fellow hikers. Once lunch is completed, you'll climb to the spectacular Erlen Falls and look over the Hollyford Valley and onto the glaciated Darren Mountains. After taking in the breathtaking views, it's time to descend to Lake Mackenzie Lodge. Hi folks, welcome to Lake Mackenzie Lodge. I'm Chip the Lodge Manager. Hi Lynn. Hey, it's Trevor. The well-appointed lodges offer all the creature comforts of flush toilets and hot showers and afterwards it's time to enjoy a sumptuous three-course meal with a glass of fine New Zealand wine. Day two from Lake Mackenzie to Rootburn Falls is 15 kilometres, passing through magnificent alpine fauna. Here we have the Snow Marguerite, and it is one of the most beautiful flowers on the Rootburn track. In fact, it's my favourite one. And you take the white one and the yellow one, and you mix them together, and you get this beautiful buttery coloured flower. Kirei Nahana. It's beautiful flowers. Yeah, it's a good, eh? Yeah. The track weaves its way up the hill until you reach a special spot called Ocean Peak Corner. All the way down the Hollyford Valley, and you can see to Martin's Bay. From here, the trek follows the valley down towards the Harris Saddle, along the spectacular Hollyford Face. As you cross the Harris Saddle, you'll be at 1227 metres above sea level and feel that you could almost reach out and touch the mountains. After a relaxing lunch amongst the tall alpine tussock, it's time to leave your backpack once again for a stroll up Conical Hill to take in the awesome views from this centre point.
once you arrive at the Rootburn Falls Lodge, sit back and take in the spectacular views. As day three begins, it's time to take one last look at the falls as you drop to the alpine pastures of the Rootburn Flats before following the river and its clear emerald pools and red beech forests. <laughs> 